Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to keep looking at the Weatherlight MTGO decks. Uh, we're going to move on and look at Fiery Fury, which is a mono red deck. Let's take a look at the deck list. So we've got 18 creatures, 7 instants, 7 sorceries, single enchantment, 3 artifacts, and 24 land. We've got a mana curve off to the side there. Um, yeah, it's like because we, as you can probably tell from the amount of instants and sorceries, um, it's actually kind of like a mono red burn deck, which is actually somewhat of a rarity um, in these decks we've looked at. Like, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, I think. Uh, so let's dive in and see how uh, they managed to do a mono red burn deck with the uh, cards available at the time. So creatures first. Uh, so three lava hounds, right? So this right off the bat, Three, I think, is too many for this. Uh, maybe, but I, I, maybe I'm just imagining the worst case scenario. Let me let me talk it through. So two and double red for a four four with haste, which is obviously super good. But when it uh, enters the battlefield, it does four damage to you as well. Um, so yeah, really like high risk, high reward here. Um, the worst case scenario I'm thinking is like you draw this late in the game when you have like low life, and you know you just can't play this because it will kill you. I mean, the ideal solution is obviously you have it in your opening hand. You play it, you know, maybe power it out early on because you do have a bit of um, ramp in here and yeah and then it's like a decently sized creature that sticks around yeah it does the damage to you once but then you maybe like get a few swings with it in maybe um but i do think three is maybe not the right number i would have like um, you know maybe had like maybe just two of these but that's that's just me i think it's still okay but it is it's it's definitely this deck is like a damage race and this um this kind of just i don't know i feel like it, it it does because it's doing the same amount of damage to you as well i suppose so it's not really helping you it's just kind of like i <laughs> know it's keeping you and your opponent at like the same amount of life in a way if that makes sense um it's yeah but again if you get multiple swings that i suppose then yeah i don't know it, it feels like too high risk high reward maybe i don't know um i'm not i'm not a super big fan of it as you can probably tell uh but yeah i mean the art's cool at least i suppose um and then we've got three blood rot cyclops uh two and a red for a three three has to attack every turn if able um now this this is kind of like more my speed i think i prefer this to lava hounds even though it doesn't have haste i mean it's cheaper i suppose um it's uh, it's still like high risk high reward because it has to attack every turn if able even if that's going to get it killed but i don't know <laughs> i don't know. i think i i i'm trying to think about like I guess it depends on board state, doesn't it? But like, I think both these together actually obviously, you know, it obviously sets the tone that you are playing super aggressive red. You are doing, you are playing the damage race. You are going to be super aggressive, not care about defending. So yeah, I suppose it's it, it's fine for this. I suppose, um, and then a single hulking cyclops three and double red for a five five that can't block. Um, yeah, so another again big aggressive creature that you're just going to be swinging with. So yeah, this is this is fine as well. Uh, and then two Talrum Mind Tours, two and double red for three through with haste. Actually pretty good, I think, for the time. Uh, but yeah, again, this is fine. It just ties, again, into the theme of the deck of just playing really fast and aggressive. Uh, two Viachine of Sandstalkers, one and double red for four, two with haste. Uh, but end of turn, it goes back to your hand, so you have to keep recasting it. But it's obviously super well cost it being like um, having four power and haste for only three mana. Uh, so yeah, it just puts a lot of pressure. You know, you just keep playing it, keep attacking with it. Um, and then a single Sook out to a Lancer, uh, two and a red for a 2-2 two -two with flanking and haste. Um, this is kind of what I mean. I kind of wish there'd been maybe one fewer of the Lava Hands and maybe like one more of this. Um, maybe also because that helps like the curve a little bit more anyway. Uh, but yeah, it is it is what it is. But yeah, I really like, I, I prefer Sook out to a Lancer to the Lava Hands, even though it's... Lava Hounds is like so well costed, like at being a four four with haste for any four mana, even with that drawback. Ah, I don't know. I'm so conflicted about it. Um, and then we've got three Goblin Vandals. Uh, one red mana for a one one. Uh, you can pay one red, to destroy an artifact, to defending player controls. But uh, Goblin Vandal deals no combat damage this turn. Uses ability only if it is attacking unblocked and only once each turn. So in the Air Force deck where we had Aphidian, I was talking about like saboteur abilities, how they used to be kind of like designed where it was um, like, oh, you either get like the combat damage or you do the saboteur ability. It was like one or the other. Whereas like in later sets, it was just like, oh, if it does combat damage, you get the effect. Um, and I would say, you know, in, in later sets, then it was just like, oh, when it attacks, you get the effect. Um, so it's been really interesting actually see the, um, the evolution of like these, the, uh, the saboteur abilities but um yeah i think it's fine like artifacts just weren't as common i guess back then so this it, like it has it has a niche use i suppose it's just here just i think it's just a one drop i suppose 
Um, and they've got two rock hatchlings, uh, so one in mana for a naught one. Uh, comes into play with four shell counters on it. During your upkeep, you remove a shell counter, and it's got no shell counters on it. It becomes like a 3-3 three, three flying. Um, I mean, like, the dream is this comes down turn one. Um, but then it's like super fragile and can't do anything other than chump block. Um, you know, worst case, you it, this you draw this like late in the game, and it it just it just sits there and does nothing. Um, young me would have really liked this card, I think, because again, I would have like the you know the got the ideal situation like oh yeah, I'm gonna pay you one mana. It's eventually gonna be a three three flyer. Oh, amazing! But realistically, like you know, you you play this late in the game and it just does nothing. So yeah, not a great card, I think. Um, and then a single wildfire emissary, three in a red, uh, for a two four pro white. Um, you spend two to give it a plus one plus naught ten ten. Yep, this is just really solid. I think it's just fine. All right, and then non creature spells. So this one, the rares in the deck, is actually um goes for a fair bit of money as well after checking. So firestorm, so one red mana. Uh, you discard X cards, and it does X damage to each of X target creatures and all players. So uh, really important. This like it's not up to X targets. It like it has to be exactly x so if you discard six cards to this it's going to do six damage but you have to have six targets available so you couldn't just do this like turn one um and be like oh i'm going to pay a mountain and then play firestorm and discard like five cards like five damage to um you know to you know just to the opponent you can't do that firstly that's a terrible play don't discard your whole hand just do five damage but um you wouldn't be able to do it because there's there, likely it's not going to be five legal targets on the very first turn. So yeah, this takes like I think a bit of skill to use, but it's really nice. That it's only one. It's only one red mana. Um, obviously you're discarding a bunch of cards as well, but like I think the potential of this is really really great, and it's at instant speed as well, which is really strong. So you do it like middle of combat as well, and like really mess up like combat maths and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really really strong card, but um, I think it does. I think it's nice because it does require like a bit of skill and finesse to use like to its to its potential, obviously, because like it's such a huge risk to um to discard the cards. And I can't remember off the top of my head if like the discard is an additional cost to play it or like you you do that upon resolution. So yeah, you know, obviously if you discard the cards and then it gets countered, then you're just out of luck. Um but yeah, I either way, I think it just requires I think it's interesting it's a burn spell that requires a little bit of finesse and like picking the right moment to use it. So yeah, pretty interesting card to include, I think. Uh we've got two fire blasts. So this is a card I uh I sung the praises of in the uh in um the Wild Eyed Frenzy deck. Uh we looked at a few videos ago in the Visions one. Um it's just a super, super good card. Like I've I because I've I've played this in Red Burn decks before. I have never ever paid six mana for it. I've always sacrificed two mountains just to sneak that last um four damage through. You know, because obviously what you could do in this, like you play like lava hounds, swing with lava hounds, that's like maybe four if they get if that's four if they get through, and then you sacrifice two mountains and fire blast, and that's another four. And you've just done like eight damage out of nowhere, um, which is you know, potentially like a really huge play, and that could just be game. Um so yeah, fire blast is excellent, really, really good card. I say never, never seen anyone pay six mana for this. It is always the sacrifice two mountains because um, it's such such a good alternate cost. Um, and then three incinerates. Uh, one red does three damage to a creature or player, and a creature damaged by incinerate cannot regenerate this turn. So yeah, this is just a really nice, like reliable burn spell. Which is great. Uh, three cone of flames. Uh, three in double red uh, to do three damage to one creature, two damage to another creature, and one damage to another creature. Oh no, it can hit players as well. Actually, I lie. So. Yeah, you know, the obviously the dream situation here is do three damage to a player and then kill an X two and an X one. That's that's the ideal situation. Uh, but yeah, I like Cone of Flame. Three of them in here. I'm not sure if that's the right choice again because it is quite expensive. Um, I maybe would have just gone with like two of these and like just four incinerates. Just have just gone really doubled in and just have a full playset of incinerate maybe. Uh, two spitting earth one in red does damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control we're playing mono red so this can actually be really this has got really really high ceiling and it can be really efficient you know for only two mana potentially do a huge amount oh, excuse me huge amount of damage um so yeah really really good i think um and then two at kev x torch x and a red um has this really unique ability that spells target it while it's on the stack costs an extra two to play so it's like a spell with ward two which i think is really fun and uh it's just blaze it does the x damage target creature player but like it's a big x spell which is which is great and uh, yeah has this extra like uh protection against like counter spells and stuff so yeah really really interesting ability i would love to 
see like red get this effect like again like in like modern sets it'd be really cool um i suppose these days we just go like it can't be countered it's rather than just apply this kind of tax to it but um i think it's just a really unique fun ability which is really in this whole retrospect of mirage block just been really fun to see like these cars that have like really weird unique uh effects and abilities and then you have a single Thunderbolt. Uh, one in red does uh, either three damage to a player or four damage to a creature with flying. Yep, I think that's fine at two mana. Um, and I believe this is the other rare of the deck, Heart of Bow Garden. Uh, so two in double red for an enchantment. Has cumulative upkeep two. Um, when cumulative, when its cumulative upkeep cost is not paid, it does damage equal to its last paid cumulative upkeep to the la to target player and each creature he or she controls. So this is actually one of the rare cases of an old card with cumulative upkeep having essentially just upside. So, uh, yeah, as long as you can keep paying this, it builds up and up and up and up. And uh, and when you can't pay it or you choose not to pay it, it then just explodes and does, like, potentially a huge amount of damage. But then I feel like if you're doing that, you're then not casting your other, like, quick, aggressive red burn cells. Because this is... <sighs> That I'm trying to think about because this, you know, ideally you might pay this earlier than turn, than turn four because you've got Mind Stone here. So you could cast this, let's say turn four, um, and then turn five goes around, you pay two for its cumulative upkeep cost. Then turn six, like you, you pay four, and then maybe the turn after that you choose not to, and then it does four damage to opponent and everything they control. You know, that could be enough to, like to get the last points of damage in, but like again, like Firestorm, I think it requires it's maybe a bit of a skill test card, which yeah, I do appreciate. Like, um, it's always fun when red can play around and feel like a bit more like strategic and thinky, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I like this. Um, I don't know if it's maybe ideal for the deck, but I do like it. So there we go. Um, and then three Mindstone, uh, two mana artifact. Taps give you one colorless or you pay one and tap sacrifice to draw a card. Um, deck really likes both those abilities because the, um, the extra mana is obviously good because you've got like some X spells, you've got say like Heart of Bogan, you've got like a few quite expensive red spells in here and also the ability to sacrifice it and draw a card just gives you a bit more, um, bit more gas like cards in hand. So yeah, because this is long, long before red gets um, impulse draw. Um, and then weirdly, it's like the only, <laughs> I think it's the only Mirage uh, era block. No, actually, you know, I lie. There was the um, the Griffin one that had the Mountain Valley or whatever it was called. But yeah, this is one of the few decks, I suppose, that has a non-basic land, Crystal Vein, uh, which taps to give you um, one colorless mana, or you can sacrifice it to get two colorless mana, which is fine. Again, a little, little mana boost, I suppose. And then 23 Mountains. Um, so what could have been I'm not really sure that again like kind of like with these all these weather weather light decks it's kind of like a theme I'm not sure there's there was much in set that could have maybe fit in here um because I think you know what's here is again like kind of okay um I thought Bogarden garden fire fiend maybe um maybe instead of like wildfire emissary or something uh so it's two in a row for a two one and when it dies it does two damage to a creature sure that is a possibility uh fit of rage is kind of like an awkward buff spell uh so it's one in red for like plus three plus three in first strike which is pretty good for two mana unfortunately it's at sorcery speed which is like not ideal um but i thought that could be here maybe but i don't know what you take out for it and then as an alternate rare maybe thundermare maybe instead of the heart of bow garden um because i think that this has an immediate effect where it's uh five in a red five five with haste and when it comes in you tap all other creatures so really it is just um it's like a finisher it's like six mana essentially to like tap everything it's essentially unblockable you just immediately swing for five and you know if it doesn't if it doesn't get through you've just kind of screwed yourself over because all your stuff is then tapped but um i thought that could be in here maybe instead of heartbow garner say is like as a um as a alternate like kind of win condition like as a finisher um but yeah i'd like to obviously know what you think about this deck i think it's basically okay. i think it's like an okay attempt at like a mono red burn deck which, as I say, feels like such a rarity. Like, there's been, in this whole series, like, it feels so rare to have, like, just a straight-up just burn deck. Um, because, like, so many decks are like, dual-coloured to, like, show off more cards or whatever. So to have, like, this kind of focus on just mono-red burn actually feels quite refreshing. Um, but, yeah, if you have any thoughts or stories or comments, opinions about the deck or any of the cards in it, like, stick a comment downstairs. I'll give those a read, like I always do. I um, always enjoy doing that. Uh, but I'll be back next time going to look at the last of the Weatherlight MTGO decks. And I'm going to roll in, like, the top-bottom um choices out like the 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 mtgo decks into that video as well so be kind of like a a double whammy there but i hope you join me for that one but until then uh thanks for watching and listening and have a great day